Worship Center, Pastor Aaron here. I want to welcome you guys as we've been swinging and swaying here, listening to Lord Lift Us Up Where We Belong. We're just uh, reminiscing on, on a great old song back from the 90s. But I, I want to speak into that this morning, uh, that, that we need to be looking up to Jesus right now. Amen. Lord, lift us up where we belong. I want to talk to the people this morning. So I want you guys to tune in and start to share this uh, on your page and uh, tell everybody else about where we need to be with Jesus this morning. Amen. We know it's a, it was a cold, wintry morning, but there's still a good group in here. We've had, uh, we've had uh, little Lily Kirch got up, and she sang a song impromptu that came out of the Spirit. And uh, we've just been praying and seeking God, loving God. God's been in our worship. Amen. He has been moving in this church this morning, and we know he can move right where you guys are at today. We're glad uh, for where you are, and we just want to reach out to you and tell you we love you today. Amen. And we pray that you tune in. Um, <clears throat> We're going to look here, and I'm going to just share this story about, I was watching uh, television with my kids, and I was, it was this, this picture, and I, 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 uh, I saw a vision, and it was just like, have you ever been out on a beautiful lake, maybe uh, standing on the, on the shore of that lake, and uh, in this beautiful picture that I saw in this moment, it was just like a, a speedboat was just kind of and you know how the speedboat kind of rocks to the side and it's kind of making a, a turn and it's the way the wake is is pushing out and and there's a lot of spray coming up from the motor and and I could see in the background one of those most one of the most beautiful sunsets of all time where the sky is red you know and it's just to me and I, I realized what was happening was that's that's perfection to me to be standing on a, a lake shore and to see a speedboat just kind of just just beautiful just zipping across and just to see and it was to me the most beautiful summer day that that I could have ever seen and it's probably stuff that I saw and conjured up thoughts of the past of how I grew up and what I really lived for the things that I really loved was boating and snowmobiling and these rushes that you talk about when you just feel totally at one with God totally at peace with the Lord and just perfection. Anybody, I don't know what that is to you, but to me it was the one, most wonderful setting. And into the, that thought with God, and it, God was right there as I was sitting on the couch. But then the Lord Jesus, he just, he just touched me and he said, hey, Aaron, for very, very soon, you're not going to be looking to that anymore. You're going to see me. You're going to see me. And, and with God, he really birthed this message into my heart at that moment, and I want to talk to you guys about it today, that soon and very soon, you guys, the wonderful things that we see in this world, your family, your family memories, the things that you love about the little ones that you care about, maybe the places that you would go on vacation to go see things and take pictures, the memories that you would make maybe at a lake or at a summer camp or or going to the mountains, bringing your family the first time to see the mountains. Remember what that was like for your kids? Remember what that was like in your life when your parents or your grandparents started to show you things? And they would save up money, and they would take you uh, on a vacation. As, as a little child, you saw things that you'd never, ever seen before. Do you remember those moments, how they impacted you? Man, I remember seeing uh, Mount Rushmore for the first time, or the Rocky Mountains was just an unbelievable thing. I was just staggered by God's creation and by God's wonder-working power, you know? Uh, even this last year, we went to Grand Junction and we went around a different way uh, <clears throat> that I've never seen before, uh, going down to Gunnison and then over, way over and way south and to Grand Junction, Four Corners. And I saw things that I, that I had never seen before and I'm sitting there driving, I'm like, this is, this is like prehistoric, this is like, this is out of a movie. I couldn't, you couldn't, Spielberg couldn't imagine this if he wanted to. God's creation, you know? And I thought about the things that I've seen in this world. Uh, I've been in Puerto Vallarta, and I've, I've, I've been where the boats can go through these rocks that are like mountains, and you can go right through them, and the waves are just 25 foot high, and I've swam in those things, you know? And I've been in Belize where you can swim with the sharks, and, and sharks would come up and and hit you in the side and scare you to death, you know, and you just freeze and start to sink. And I've been, I've seen some, 
uh, La Isla Bonita in, in Belize and off the coast of Cancun. I've, I've, seen, I've seen some neat things in my life. I've been to uh, Ireland in the Giant's Causeway, uh, just one of the eight wonders of the world, you know, and the Cliffs of Moor. And I've seen, I've seen cities that are cool. I've seen London, and I've seen, seen places in Scotland. And, but you guys, what the Lord is, <laughs> was speaking to me, he's still speaking to me. He says, Aaron, everything that you have ever seen in your life is going to pale in comparison to what you're about to see. And that goes for every single human being in this room. Everything you've ever loved, everything you've ever known, everything you've ever... all It is just about to pale in comparison with the new Jerusalem that I am sending to you. The, the, the heaven that I have prepared for them that love Him. The Bible says, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither has come into the heart and the mind of man the things that God hath prepared, amen, for them that love Him. And a lot of times, I can quote that scripture, and you guys have heard it one million times, so you're just like, yeah, scripture. God's got it. But we have very little revelation of it. Amen? So I want to talk to you guys a little bit this morning, and that's my intro. But I want to start with this thought. <clears throat> I think God has given us enough time to enjoy life, don't, don't you? I'm going to be 45 in February. There's very few things I, I don't think I've done yet. Huh? It's February, isn't it? There's not a whole lot of things. Kay, is there a whole lot of things you really want to accomplish yet? You got a lot of goals set before, before Jesus comes that you really want to accomplish? You know what I mean? Roger, there's a whole lot of things you just have to do before Jesus could come. It's a short bucket list. I have very, very little to do before that I want to see in this world. And and I want to start with this first thought. Here's the first thought. God doesn't mind that we enjoy life. Amen? He wants us to enjoy life. He wants you to enjoy His creation. He's the Creator God. Amen? I believe He loves it when we're snorkeling on a coral reef someday. And, some play, and the fish are swimming by. And you're, you're tasting salt water. And you're seeing things that you could never have ever imagined that a Creator God could have ever created. You ever watch those nature shows? Ever? And you're just seeing and like he made this octopus and it's got all these legs and how it eats and everything. And it's just and it's just bl mind blowing the things that God has come up with to just, I guess, blow our minds. And then to know that he made it for us and for our good pleasure. And God wants us to take pleasure in his stellar creation. I mean, just uh, lakes and mountains and streams. Any fishermen in here? They're like Mountain streams, fly fishing and oceans and. And snowmobiles and trails that go on forever. And if you're a trailblazer at all and you love to explore, is that in anybody's heart just to go exploring? I mean, I like to explore, you know. I, I just, it's so much fun. And, and God has given us these wonderful things. Anybody ever been to a national park? Or are they on your bucket list and you want to do this one and you want to do Yellowstone and you want to do Redwood Forest and... I would love to see those things. Anybody else? I would really like to see them. So I love trekking and expedition and getting geared up and, and taking my family and my friends. There's very few trips I'll ever take without some friends that would go with me. And now as my, I got this little budding family and I realize there's things that I really enjoyed in life that now I want to share with them. I want to show them. I want them to feel some of the same things that was exhilarating to me, you know. Which, oh, pray for my family. <laughs> you know, but uh, how many love vacations, right? You guys say, where is he going with this? Vacations are wonderful. And there are times where we get to spend uh, these precious moments in life. Uh, Royal Gorge is a place. Continental Divide, the Badlands. Anybody been there? We, we usually stop on the way. Snowmobiling. So many places. So little time, right? But my point number two is this. But times are changing really fast. Times are changing. God is getting ready for a new heaven and a new earth. So peaceful, so vast, so safe, so prosperous, you guys. So holy and so right. God seems ready and even eager for us to enjoy this one thing that we've almost forgotten in the midst of all His beauty, in the midst of all His creation, 
In the midst of all the things that we can do as free American citizens, traveling this world and, and running to and fro, you know what we've for, almost forgotten the beauty of? Jesus. Right? I mean, you can. You can get so caught up in the goodness, the good things of God, the, the, his creation, his greatness, um, family, activities, things like maybe you enjoyed, like sports, or, and you can push your kids into those things. You know what I mean? Um, but I believe God, and what he's telling me in this is he wants us to get back to him. He wants us to have our first love embedded in Jesus Christ. Come back to your first love. Amen. To know him. And he, he wants it to be so supreme, Teresa, that it's him and him alone. Amen. And I'm telling you guys, if you've read the book, it's going that direction. To love God in his splendor. Have you ever seen the glory of God? The splendor of God? Have, have you ever seen, have you ever felt his love for you? I mean, honestly. Because it's been something that God has had to reveal to me that he loves me. I remember I went to Baton Rouge one time years ago. The Holy Spirit spoke to me before I ever went there. And he said, there's something I want to speak to you. And I'm sitting there in a worship service. And I hear the voice of the Lord. I've traveled however many miles, a thousand miles or whatever, to hear this one profound thing. And you know what the Holy Spirit told me? I love you. He repeated it. I love you. Could you not have told me that in Nebraska? God loves us. He loves us. He cares for us. I remember I preached a graveside service for my aunt, Dina. And I had preached, I was faithful to preach the gospel at the graveside service. And you know what I felt from, I felt like heaven opened up and I felt the favor of God poured out on me. Because I didn't shirk the duty of pointing people to Jesus Christ. And I felt heaven. On a cold day, I felt heaven come down and give me one of the greatest anointed feelings that I've ever known in my life. I felt the glory of God. I felt glory. I felt glory in my lifetime. I felt moments in my life, James, where I've, I know that I've walked in the book of Acts. I believe I tasted what it was like to have God say, turn left, turn right. I'll show you where to put this foot. Walk through that door. You have a word. You have a, a touch. You're going to heal that person. That person is going to get up out of this place. That person laying in that bed will be saved if you'll pray, totally yielding and totally staying close to Christ. Amen? And God has done miracle signs. And I felt the glory of God on my life. And I just know, church, that's just one drip in the bucket of what it's going to be like when we see him. When God lifts us up, amen, where we belong, amen, where the eagles fly on a mountain high. I love this, where we see Jesus in all of his glory. God wants us to know him, and he, but he wants us to know him through his son. God wants us to enjoy his most prized possession, you guys, his most beloved, his only begotten, his son, Jesus Christ, the beautiful one. There's no other beauty other than Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Christ, means he is everything. He is all in all. He's the anointed one. He's the Savior. Listen, don't, don't let these words fall. He's the King of kings, you guys. He's the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. I've got a picture in my office of all the names. The Rose of Sharon. The carpenter, the door, the way, the truth, all these. He is everything. And God is ready for you guys, and he's ready for us for eternity. Think about this. He's ready for us for eternity. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants his will to be done here, and he's going to bring his will here. Did you know the new Jerusalem is going to come like a bride out of heaven and come to this earth? And it's going to sit there physically. A 1,500-mile kingdom, actually a mountain. The mount, a mountain, it's called Mount Zion, is going to come out of heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. He's going to meet us. He's going to bring that place right here and set it down on earth. Isn't that amazing? You guys, that is where you are about to be for all eternity. Amen? 
not here on this earth. Amen. He's going to change even the complexion of this earth. He's going to change even the beauty of creation. He's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. And he wants us to know him in Philippians today in your Bibles. Philippians 3, verse 7. Philippians 3, verse 7. Paul, when he was caught up into the third heaven, he was caught up by revelation, and he got to see above the firmament. He got to see into the heavenly realms, and he said, I could not even utter the things that I saw there. Can you imagine? And he said, after that, Sister Kay, he saw something. He caught he went up above uh, he went up above the, the atmosphere and he caught into the heaven heavenly realms and he saw things that he was not worthy to even utter. And after that, his perception of beautiful things on this earth absolutely changed. In fact, he didn't see the he didn't see what we see anymore. He wasn't as, as impressed with, with, with even what we have here on earth anymore. And it says in this passage in uh, Philippians 3, 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all, all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. In, in fact, what he comes to say here in verse 10 is that... I, that all I want to do is know Him. Can I get an amen there? He says, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. I remember Clendenin preaching this and he said, from that moment on, he didn't see a lake. He didn't see a stream. He didn't see a five-star hotel. He, he wasn't living for any of these things anymore. He wanted to know one thing and one thing on earth. And he realized in the in the... In, the, in, in all of eternity, the thing that really matters is knowing Jesus Christ and the fellowship of His sufferings, it says here. In the power of His resurrection. Look at verse 10 if you have it in, in your Bibles. That I may know Him, and everybody say, and the power. I want you people that are watching today say, and the power. And the power. Know Him and the power. Because you can't really know Him without the power. Amen? Do you see that? Go ahead and underline that. Know Him and then know the power. The power that reveals Him is the Holy Ghost, right? Sent down from heaven to bring revelation of this book, which is spiritual and anointed and written by the Holy Spirit. Amen? You've got to know the power to know Him if you really want to know Him. But Paul said, I want to know Him and the power. Right? Of what? Of His resurrection, man. Of His resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. My God, hallelujah. He says, if by any means I might attain, everybody say attain, unto the resurrection of the dead. Hallelujah. That he, that's what his hope was, you guys. That's our hope. I want to attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I want to be resurrected. Anybody else with me today? Say amen. And he says, not as though I've already attained. Either we're already perfect. What's that? Spiritual maturity. Perfection. He says, Paul says, I'm not there yet. But, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ. In other words, you were called, you were sought, you were bought, you were blood bought by Jesus Christ. And the moment you put faith in Jesus, you were apprehended of him. To do what? To attain the resurrection, but to know Him. Amen? To know Him in such a way. You, not just to... to, to oh, yeah, that's Jesus. He died 2,000 years ago. And I'm going to continue. No, that you would know Him in His power that I may apprehend. Brother, I count myself not to have apprehended, but listen, you guys. Anybody else ever failed along the way? <clears throat> but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Everybody say high calling. High calling of God in Christ Jesus. Your attaining is just like this. We're going to go trekking. We're going to do some expedition. We're going to do some mountaineering. Okay, so you've got to have your gear. And I am going. <clears throat> you ever guys seen those people that they climb Mount Everest or something like that? 
They're all dressed. They've got skis on. They've got all their uh, polar gear, and, and they're going, I am going to, to, to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I've not apprehended it yet. I'm not there. I have not attained it, but I am pressing on. Every failure along the way is just a stepping stone for me to gain spiritual maturity, to gain insight, to gain wisdom, to gain holiness, to gain more power, more grace, which is divine revelation. Every stepping stone along the way is my journey towards Jesus Christ. And one of these days, soon and very soon, I'm going to get to the place where I need to be with Jesus. And I'm going to juke and I'm going to jive, but I am going someplace. Amen. I am going to the place where I'm going for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing towards that mark. Doesn't matter if the winds are blowing. Doesn't matter if there's a stream in the way. I'm going to get over that stream. I'm going to get over this. I'm going to make it to the high calling to find Jesus and to know Him. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I've been apprehended of God. That's why you've been apprehended of God. Amen. Not to go to heaven at the end of the day, but to know Jesus in such a way and to know Jesus in the power of His resurrection. Somebody say amen, because that's good preaching in this place. Hallelujah. Revelation 21.10. Amen. I want to talk to you guys a little bit because Sam stole my thunder when she was preaching out of Revelation this morning. She took my altar call. <clears throat> but that's okay, because God's in control, isn't He? I want you guys to know that I did a little study on the New Jerusalem, and I want to read the commentary to you in just a second. It says, here we have the revelation that the city is not a cube, but a series of mountains, starting with low foothills just inside the walls. For 1,500 miles, the city ascends to the highest mountain on which it is located. In, uh, in the middle, the heavenly tabernacle or the temple in which uh, the scenes of Revelation 4 and 5 will be seen by all who visit the Capitol building in the New Jerusalem. From this high mountain, John could see the city. He could see the streets. He could see the rivers below. Uh, he could see it all. It's called Mount Zion in Revelation 14.1 and Hebrews 12.22. It's called the Mount of the Congregation in the sides of the north in Isaiah 14, 12. It's called the Mount of His Holiness in Psalm 48, 1 and in Zechariah 6, 1. I want to read this, Psalm 48, 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. You guys, that's your destination. That's better be on your bucket list. Roger Kingsley, that's got to be on your bucket list. And it better be high priority that you, because you know what? Paul said, I'm not, I'm not attained. I'm not totally there. But I, I press to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. First of all, to be resurrected. And then to go to this place and to be a part of the new Jerusalem. That is my goal. That is my focus. That is my, that's what I see. I've been caught up into the heavenlies. Amen. And I've seen this earth. And now I count it all as dung. Dung, nothing on this earth do I want to live for. Not four-wheelers, not, not combines, not Chevy pickups, not anything else, you guys, but that I may attain unto the resurrection. Amen? Hallelujah. He was not earthly-minded anymore. He was so caught up in the things of God. Wow. Psalm 24.3 says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He's talking about the mountains of the New Jerusalem. Who shall stand in His holy place? But he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who's not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, deceitfully, even he shall receive the reward of the Lord. My Lord and Savior, think about this track, this journey that we're all on today. Man, it just makes me want to sing that song. Lord, lift us up where we belong, where the eagles fly. On a mountain high. I don't have enough soul to really carry it. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Far from the world we know. Where the clear winds blow. Wow. Church, this earth is not your home. It is not even remotely close to anything. Church, I want you guys to look higher with me right now than you've ever looked in your life, okay? 
You've got to realize that the one that made it all is at work. He is the Alpha and Omega. Listen to me on the, t on the TV right now. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and he is the end. Amen? Realize the one that created it all, the one that gave his all, is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Stay with me. He's ready to present his bride to his father. And he's ready to bring it all to pass. And I can feel that in my guts right now what God's doing upon this earth. He wants to bring us to a place. Anybody want to go to that place with me? Amen. I want to take all the kids. <clears throat> I, want to, I want to see my whole family saved and set free. You guys listen to this. Listen to this, you guys, where there's no temptation anymore. Ever been tempted? Where there's no struggle anymore. Ever struggled? Where there's no more failure anymore. Have you ever failed? Where there's no more bouts with the flesh. No more bouts with depression. No more bouts with insecurity, which is fear. You guys, that will be done away with no further tests. No more thorns in the flesh. Can I get an amen? There'll be no more migraines over there. Amen. No more fatigue over there. Anybody ever get tired? There'll be no more weakness there. There's no sickness. He's going to wipe every tear from our eyes. There's no more sorrow there. Joe Clark, I heard your testimony. This, there's no sorrow. There'll be no weeping over there. Amen. There'll be no worry. How are we going to make it? When God is your provision, you don't need to worry anymore. Amen. It's his kingdom, you guys. There'll be no more disappointment in self or in others. Anybody ever let you down? Think about it. There'll be no more wandering. No more wandering. I won't ever have to sing this, Lord. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. He to rescue me from danger interposed his only son. A lot of the songs, we won't need to sing about those because we'll be singing a new song in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's no more battling in our own bodies. I struggle with my own flesh. For in my flesh dwells no good thing, Aaron. i got to remind myself that. Think about it. No culture trying to capture your interest anymore. Think about it. Think the world tries to capture your attention. There won't be any distractions anymore. Amen. Think about this, you guys. No other world to love but Christ's kingdom on this earth. There'll be nothing else that you want to live for, but you're caught up into that third heaven where Jesus is there, and the angels are there singing holy, holy, and the elders are there, the church. You guys, there'll be no wars there. There'll be no hate there, you guys. There'll be no divisions there. There's no fear there. There's no bitterness there. It can't live. No world, no flesh, and no devil because the devil's tied up until the end of the millennial reign. And then he's cast into a lake of fire forever. Amen? He's a defeated foe. Amen? And in this place, did you know the millennium is just a setup? In fact, it's a transition for a thousand years because we wouldn't even be able to go to heaven straight away. I'm telling you, the things that God hath prepared for they that love him, heaven's going to be forever after the millennial reign after satan's finally put down once and for all and the and they thrown into the lake of fire heaven for eternity and eternity and eternity so you even even that thousand years of a grace period to get you ready for heaven heaven isn't that something that is unbelievable we're going to a place you guys that he's prepared for us revelation 21 if you would with me this morning I love this. Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the earth, first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. No more ocean, guys. And I saw, and, and I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and I am Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Church, that is for you today. Amen. Oh God, the things that he has prepared for us. I want to tell you something. I, in this study, I learned something that was very, very interesting to me. Did you know <clears throat> that, uh, that the streets are going to be gold? You know that. Did you know the buildings are going to be made of? Many of us are going to be pillars in the buildings of our God. When he calls it a bride that comes down out from heaven, that's including us. Because I believe when this happens, we are there with him at the marriage supper in the Lamb. It says that the elders are pillars in the church. It says that the apostles are pillars in that church, in that temple of God. It's interesting that the lighting you brought out this morning will be, there's no need for a sun because Jesus will be the light. Amen. What I didn't realize was, was uh, this, that it's water system. You all got to have water. Amen. Well, its water system is Jesus Christ as well, because out of the throne pours a fountain of living water and he's the source of the wellspring of the water that you're going to drink amen and then i i, I looked deeper into it and he and he said what are we going to eat there well jesus christ has promised us that he will uh give us give us something to eat up there and guess what he's going to lead us to a tree the tree of life that is going to produce uh, both manna and food for you all the days of your life in the new Jerusalem. So he's the source of your light. He's the source of your food. He's the source of your water. He's the source of your strength. He is all in all. He is everything. Hallelujah. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is alive and well forever and ever and ever and ever. And he is the source of your focus and strength. Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the one who sought you and bought you will become your every Everything. Oh, hallelujah for all eternity. Amen. Praise God. And in Revelation 21, 24, here's the traffic of heaven. It says the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Wow. Wow. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or makes lies, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. I just, it's food. Here's its food. Revelation 2, 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You guys... This is a good, good, good thing, you guys. Its rulers are going to be Jesus on the throne. Hallelujah. And the people that have followed him. Its rulers, Revelation 22, verse 3 through 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no more night there. They need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Church, this is the future. This is the future. This is moments away as we look into the rapture of the church and the marriage supper of the Lamb. You guys you can just kiss this earth goodbye and every thought that you ever had in this life because it's going to get better and better and better and better and better for all eternity. Amen? In fact, the Bible says there's no need for gifts anymore. Did you know that? The Bible says we prophesy in part. <laughs> It says, whether there be prophesies, they'll, prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. For when that which is perfect is come, when Jesus comes, then that which is in part shall be done away. 
We won't have to have any, any other languages. The gifts won't have, because we'll be speaking His language. Amen? He'll know us intimately, and we'll know Him. Amen? A totally different kind of a life. I think about that song they sing a lot at funerals. I can only imagine when that day comes, when I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all, when all I will do is forever forever worship you i can only imagine and then the chorus surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or in awe of you be still will i stand in your presence or to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak at all i can only imagine i can only imagine church what a contrast to the world we live in right now Please let me bring this out in the next, next. Think about this. Right now, in contrast, you live a life that you currently live surrounded by darkness, decay, death, lawlessness, rebellion, moral freefall, antichrist agendas. In thought, action, the forces of darkness in high places, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, right? In stark contrast to where you live right now, you're going to have to give up where you live right now to go there. I want to ask some people. There's a whole lot of people that say, you know, I'm just not quite ready for Jesus to come yet. There's a lot of things I really enjoy about this present earth that I'm not quite ready for Jesus to return yet. You ever heard that? There's still some things I want to do. Church, we need to look into this word and see what's about to happen. We need to realize the plan that God has. We need to imagine the word of God coming to pass. And we need to realize that we're not here to live for our own flesh or our own life or to create a legacy or a retirement program or to build a kingdom where you have a Morton shed and a few horses that run through a ring, you know, on a beautiful day. Or even back to my vision where there's a lake there and there's a speedboat going across it and spraying everything around it. You guys, that in itself and in its essence, none of those things are bad, amen? But it's going to pale in comparison to what is about to happen, amen? I want to say this, hallelujah. Imagine being a place that all the people that you ever meet there are filled with the glory of God. I mean, we look for them on planet Earth and try to bring them together and organize them, right? Right? But imagine everybody there, Cassia, is filled with God's glory, filled with His grace, filled with the Holy Spirit, wonderfully saved with a testimony. You guys think about that. Wow. Church, listen to this. There is going to be one higher than the President of the United States of America there. There's going to be somebody higher than the President of the United States in that place. He's going to be reigning in the New Jerusalem in a few days, weeks, or months. And guess what? He's going to bring judgment to this earth. And I guarantee you, he's going to drain the swamp. Let me say that again to everybody that's listening. There is somebody that cometh, and he says, he comes to judge and make war. His name is Jesus Christ, and he says, I will, re I will recompense. I'm the judge of this earth, and he will drain the swamp. One time he did it in Noah's day. Are you guys listening to me? And now we've gotten to the place in time where we are playing with the human genome again. Once, long time ago, 
It says the, 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 the sons of God, the fallen angels, went into the daughters of men and created a new type of race, genetic modification. Do you know what door we're knocking at right now? We're changing the genome of our body. I guarantee you God's, God's not going to put up with it much longer. I guarantee you, you guys, where we want to be in this hour is this. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Are you seeing where God is telling me to set my affections on things that are above? Amen. That's what he's telling every single one of us. Look not to the things that are here. You guys, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is about ready to return for his bride. Yes, we're going to fight. Yes, we're going to pray. Yes, we're going to be righteous while we're here. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you guys, he's saying, love me right now. And you're about to get a greater revelation of him. I also want to encourage you guys today. There's going to be a meeting and it's going to be in the air soon and very soon. <clears throat> I used to sing a song like this. I believe I can fly. Anybody heard that? <laughs> I believe I can touch the sky. Yeah, you know the song. You guys know these. Did you know some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away? Do you know Jesus is coming soon? Morning or night or noon? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know that you're going to fly? I tell my kids every day. I can fly. I'm going to fly soon and very soon. I can only imagine what that flight's going to be like. Can you imagine when you hear that trumpet sound? Come on, church. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God when God opens that thing up. Praise God. I, I love him. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Revelation and close out this service today. Amen. <clears throat> Revelation 19.11. Let's read a little bit of Revelation and close the word out today. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness doth he judge. We can't seem to find a good judge in the land right now. We can't seem to find somebody that's going to look at all the evidence, you guys. <laughs> I guarantee you the judge of all the earth is going to do right. Amen? Amen? I guarantee he's going to drain every swamp that there's ever been. He's going to purge the entire earth of wickedness and rebellion. He's going to do it. In fact, the Bible says God's cup of iniquity is almost full. And when it reaches the brim, you know what he's going to do? Pour out the wrath of God, the winepress of his wrath. He's got to do it. It's got to come to that. It has to come to that. <clears throat> His eyes, verse 12, are as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dripped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God, and the armies which were in heaven, that's us, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Saddle up, guys. And out of his mouth goeth a, two, a, a sharp sword, that he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Do you know Jesus is going to rule the nations? Can I, come on, can I get an amen there? Amen. Jesus is going to rule the nations, you guys. Hallelujah. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of his love. Come on, so somebody, let's, let's preach a balanced gospel. The fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw the angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together for the supper of the great God, and they, that they may eat the flesh of ooh, kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit upon them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat upon the horse, and against his army. That's against us. You were already fighting that battle in the spiritual, aren't we? And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them, that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image 
These both were cast alive into the lake of burning, fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant was slain. Now, that's what's going to happen. Go to tw- verse, uh, chapter 22, 6 through 6. And this is the last book of the Bible, you guys. Here's how it all goes down. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful, verse 6, are faithful and true. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which shortly must shortly be done. Here's Jesus Christ. There's a quote of the day for you. This is Jesus to you. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. I want to ask you, everybody in this room, are you interested in Jesus Christ? Are you interested in going to heaven? Are you interested in keeping the prophecies of this book? Are you studying it like your life depends on it? Are you putting faith in the words of God and doing them like your life depended on it? Because even Paul said, I've not already attained. I'm not already perfect yet. There's still much maturity in the life of the apostle. What about us, you guys? Verse 9. 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. See, Jesus is about to return, and he's going to find you in, in this state, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. When that trumpet sounds, he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So this was the proving ground. This was the time. And you had the opportunity. And the holy prophets of old, verse 6, sent angels, which are presbyters or preachers or pastors, to tell you now's the time. Today's the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Do not wait till tomorrow because Jesus is coming. And this is all coming down. And this is the truth. Is anybody listening out there in Facebook land? Amen. Today's a day of salvation how can I put it through any more strongly to the young to the old because it burns within my heart that everyone would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth and that's God through me amen verse 12 it says behold listen everybody in this room don't hide listen behold Jesus says I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be Are you on the winning side today? I'm not talking about the the Super Bowl tonight. I could care less, honestly, who plays or who wins. But are you on the winning team? Do you know Jesus? Let's, Let's read it till the end here, guys. 13. Are you ready? And then we're close. I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm beginning and the end, the first and the last. Listen. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they have the right, to, the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into that city. Do, do you want to go to the new Jerusalem? You want to eat of the tree of life? Because outside of it, 15, read it with me. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers and idolaters, Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Listen, you say, well, that's not me. I'm not a whoremonger. I'm not a dog. Listen, anybody that's not put faith and trust in Jesus Christ, anybody that's not born again of the Spirit, washed in the blood, you're putting your faith in this world. You're putting your attention and your affections in the idols of this culture, which do not exist in heaven. They will not exist in the New Jerusalem. And if you're not born again today, you are a dog. You are a whoremonger. You are a sorcerer because you're believing in witchcraft and you're caught up in a world that's going to send you straight to hell unless you give your heart and life in repentance to Jesus Christ. And somebody say amen because that's the gospel. There's a God that loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. He sent his best. And this whole revelation of this word of God is about Jesus Christ. And guess what? Eternity is about Jesus Christ. The millennium is about Jesus Christ. The nations that are going to serve him will be about Jesus Christ. Amen. Nobody else is getting in into that place. Mom and dad's faith is not going to get you there. Grandma and grandpa's faith is not going to get you there. You have to back up by what you believe the commandments of the living God and submit yourself to his holy word to be saved. And if you're not, listen to me, please. 
you will not go to heaven. You will go to a devil's hell, and that hell will be cast into the lake of fire where there's burning and gnashing of teeth forever and ever and ever. Is that a wake-up call for anybody under the sound of my voice today? I pr- it's, it will be played over the radio, but you guys have to know this. I want to be able to wash the blood off my hands and to have told my place, my planet, my community, my friends, my family, that Jesus is worth it all. Amen? All to the I owe. He's washed us clean by his precious blood. Let's finish it out. <clears throat> 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you. The same thing's happening right now. Angel means presbyter. It means pastor and it means preacher. You have heard the word of God over this airwave if you're listening to this. <sighs> unto you, these things in the churches, the great I am. The root and the offspring of David and the bride and morning star. Look at this. Here's the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit and the bride say what? Come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst. Isn't your soul empty without God? And Jesus is saying, come. The Spirit's saying, come. God's saying, come. The angel's saying, come. The pastor's saying, come. And whosoever will, that means anybody can come, let him take of the water of life freely today. You guys, we've got, look at this, four more verses and we're done. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. Listen to me now. This is so serious. I don't believe we've got much time left. It's about to be extinguished on this earth The time of the Gentiles is about to be done, and then he's going to deal with Israel. Every man that hears the words of the prophecy, if any man shall add to these things, God's going to add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. That means you write yourself a new Christianity. Uh Uh-uh. And if you take away the words from this book of prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life, out of the, look at this, out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book 20 we got two verses left he which testifieth these things says surely what is he saying again the third time church read it with me everybody out loud surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus come and destroy the planet Come and burn up the entirety of the earth and, w- and, and make a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Come and be judge. Come and root out all the evil that we see and discern right now. Come and prepare a place for me. Last verse, guys. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Right now, in this house, stand to your feet. And as you're listening right now, and as you're watching, this is coming out of my spirit, man. And I can't hide it. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus for every human being under the sound of my voice. It is, it is time. It's high time. It's game time. For you to be looking and for you to be on the winning team. The winning team isn't Kansas City and, and, the, and Tampa Bay. You guys, are you born again? Are you saved and washed in the blood? And could God do anything, anything else to say, come, come, come. Behold, prepare. I, behold, I come quickly. Don't get caught up in the... Listen, some of you guys think that this world is everything. This world is a blink. It's a vapor and it's gone. We're about to enter into eternity that goes forever. Please, 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 every head bowed in, in, this, in this room, let this hit, oh my gosh, like a defibrillator to your chest. Awake, thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you life. Could I use the people in this room to pray right now for people that are watching? Father, in the name of Jesus, we need you now. And I pray, Father God, that you do a quick work 
in saving the souls of our family, our friends, our communities, and fixing our eyes not upon this present life, but upon Jesus. That we would see you as Paul did. And after that, he saw nothing else. Father, we look to you, Father God, and you alone in this hour. If you're watching by uh, Facebook or social media and God is tugging on your heart, I ask you to just bow the knee and, and ask Jesus right now to come into your heart and say, Lord Jesus, would you please forgive me? I want to be with you in heaven. I repent of my known sins. I know I'm a sinner. And I, I repent. I turn from them. I want you in my heart and life right now. Everybody's praying in this room right now. And I want, Lord Jesus, you to wash my sins away and to come in. I want to know you. I want to live for you. I want to make you the king of my life. Would you please come into my heart? If you feel the Holy Spirit, even by, through social media, dear God, just, just obey him. Ask Christ to come into your heart and wash all your sins away and make everything new. Behold, I make all things new. Drink and eat freely whosoever will. Receive Jesus into your heart and soul by believing in everything that is about to happen and know that you heard it and you heard it right because it will echo in your heart forever. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Trust Jesus in this hour. And church, would you trust Jesus in this hour? All the church. Everybody wants justice. Believe me, the judge is waiting the trumpet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, let it that encourage you in this hour that God has this whole thing lined up. And I'm going to end where we started. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Where the eagle flies on the mountain high. Lord, lift us up into Mount Zion. And everybody said, Amen. And Amen. Thank you for watching.